two of the top premium SUVs fight it out. The BMW X3 recently facelifted against the Mercedes GLC in the all new generation here with Thomas Nautico for you in 4K full screen, full length. Let's go. The X3, well, it's been there quite a while on this generation, but with the facelift, new front grille here, vertical fins, really strong styling. This also has the M Sport package. So we have the black accentuation in the low part and a stronger intake right here. Both have LED specs. You can get different LED specs and interesting how they have totally different signatures here for the LED. The GLC also in the comparable AMG line today. That means also sporty air intakes right here. And it now also comes with this micro star pattern, a really beautiful feature. So to me, from the front, they're both very beautiful. It's just different design philosophy. What's your take? Tell me in the comments. With 4 meters 72 or 186 inches, the new GLC has grown a little bit if you compare it to the predecessor. And now it's basically at the same length like the BMW X3, just a centimeter difference. And the design language is completely different here, especially the GLC, more this, this round shape here overall. Interesting sidestep. They not only look cool, but also serve aerodynamics, but you might get you, you know, you know, trousers dirty or something when they are dirty as well. 19 inch wheels, winter tires, comparable also to 19 inch wheels, winter tires for the BMW. We also have painted wheel arches in the vehicle color, both white here today, a great comparison for sure. M Sport Pack means M Batch here. And here also this, um, you know, this breezer element because in this case, it's not a real air breather, just a design element. And then we have here also black around the windows. And you can see the difference in design language once again, where you have more curved in, more angular features with the X3. The question is, which one do you prefer? I think both are beauty in themselves, I have to say. Front was both, you know, very appealing. Side, I think, yeah, that's a little bit more, you know, angular, sporty siding. I would prefer the X3. What about the rear? In the rear, we can see big design differences. Here with the GLC, more this round shape raindrop design, I would call it. New style for tail lamps and in lower part. Out of crew, fake exhaust police alert because these are clearly just visual tips. With the X3, a more rectangular design, a sportier approach with the recent face it, also new tail lamp design here. This is a very cool thing and really always tells you, hey, this is an X3 that you can also distinguish it against the small brother, the X1 or something. With the M Sport Pack, you also get the black accentuation in your lower part, a diffuser style, and these are real exhaust and in this case. Which one is the favorite for you in the rear? Tell me. Acceleration figure, by the way, just a little bit over six seconds for both, but difference in, on, on the US market won't be that much because of the emission rules in the European Union. This is a little bit detuned, so there is then a bigger difference in acceleration. So the GLC, a little bit quicker, a little bit more horsepower here with the spec GLC 300 against the X-Drive 30i. And the very interesting technology detail is the rear axle steering up to 4.5 degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels. This comes together in the package with air suspension and the air suspension and the rear axle steering this is actually special to the GLC. The X3 does not have it, just a normal adaptive suspension. And the cool thing is here with the rear axle steering, it reduces the turning circle by about a meter because this here goes 4.5 degrees in the opposite direction. Isn't it funny that in the key fob comparison here, the Mercedes, again, all the way round, central shape, and the BMW more angular shape, so the design on the exterior is also reflected in the key fobs. I like that actually. Here, Mercedes door closing sound, actually quite solid. And then inside of the doors in the new generation, it's all about the looks definitely. It's therefore very sleek and also clean. But then again, functionality wise, this one does not get feedback anymore with controlling seat. One button design here for seat heating and memory function. So visually it looks cool at first then, but when you look closer then, Maybe I even prefer the previous generation, but the ambient light integration is awesome here, also around the air vents. So the Mercedes interior is more really about look here, what we got, more this wow effect. AMG line means also the horizontal spokes at the steering wheel. And in this case here, there is an animal skin spec on the seat, but there's a lot of Artico, for example, the high-grade leatherette available also for the Mercedes, they have good choices there. Seating position here in the GLC, I would say it is fairly comfortable, yes, but I wouldn't say 
it's ideal for tall people. So I think the seat ergonomics is not top of the game. So when you're tall, you feel like sitting more on the seat than in the seat. However, just the cockpit around you, around you that is more caging you in actually. So not too much space above your head. It's okay with 189 or 6 foot 2. But overall, seat ergonomics, I think the GLC will not win today. You won't get back pain or something, but I think Mercedes has to work on the ergonomics. Interior setup with the Mercedes here. Everything very central with these round lines. Nice wood insert, but a lot of high gloss black here. But I really like the air vents as for the illumination. But here, that's again seen it with the C class. It's not straight, you know, they're not like, you know, they should be like this. But yeah, build quality wise here uh, on the inside, just these knobs, not that ideal. And the temperature is always controlled in the screen right here. Yeah, um, so no real dials as for that. But it has also here a lot more interesting features. Here, for example, in this off-road view, we can also go to this off-road camera and then you have a see-through bonnet. The image is being built up and now I can see what's going on underneath, not with the live feed. The live feed is around. The feed underneath is then basically built up by the live feed before and then I can exactly see what's underneath. So that's a very cool feature. Here at the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is also then available as the wireless. Only thing that is cool here with the vents, you have this feature that the air vents turn red or blue depending on the color changes. Digital instruments, but we can also see the consumption, nine liters, one kilometers for the GLC, 26 MEG US, 31 MEG UK that would be. And then here we can also, for example, have full screen GPS map, car internally though, or for example, this great off-road gauge. This is, yeah, the most fancy one for sure. And you also get a head-up display. How does it work on the steering wheel? You slide here, for example, for the volume. It looks clean and fancy, but for controlling it, always better to have a feedback. There is some kind of feedback when you press this here. But you see here is like one button fits it all, basically. So one button, but then different capacitive areas. Mm, this middle console here is full of high gloss black, so yeah, not my favorite one. Underneath you have cup holders. They are not that much securing the bottles though. Then I here, for example, I have a cable um, connected because in the front you have two USB-C chargers. And I always like this split opening here for the armors with more charging underneath. Now to the rear, same design here. Of course, inside of the door is also interesting because they use a lot of, you know, also here like leather red material, soft touch everything and looks cool from the ambient light integration. Legroom, however, when I'm driving here as a tall person, barely fits actually so not that much leg room it works with the recess here and headroom is actually no problem it's decently comfortable but also kind of stiff from the seats looking forward to the comparison to the x3 and in the middle part you can also sit but very limited also as for the legs so if you go compare it also to the glb brother by the way has approximately the same length but just has more space on the interior. The GLC is more this upmarket SUV in the Mercedes lineup and also you know, with more power and more luxury features uh, and so on, rear access steering, whereas the GLB is more like this family space on the inside. But what about the comparison here, GLC versus X3? This will also be very interesting here for the rear. Switching to the BMW, door closing sound, also solid, maybe a little bit better probably. Then inside of the doors, also soft touch material, also clean design and so on. Here with real haptic feedback for the seat control directly at the seat actually. And the seat itself also available now here, of course it's a standard thing, perforated sensor tech. And this is, you know, also with breathability, great quality and also animal free. This one also the M Sport steering wheel here. Steering heating control is right here. With the GLC, you have to use the voice command or it's just combined with the seat heating actually. Seating position, somewhat comparable. I feel that the BMW X3 gives you a little bit more SUV driving position and the GLC, that's more or less more crossover-ish. Here you also have a little bit more space with the middle console and the seat itself, you sit a little bit more in the seat actually, so maybe a little bit better. But I think for BMW seats, the X3 doesn't have like the best ergonomics, but it's still good. We are really comparing good and good, definitely. 
in this segment here, I think ergonomics wise, the Volvo XC60 would be the best one. And the Lexus NX is also very good as for the seat comfort. But overall, I think maybe like a slight, but just maybe a tiny advantage here for the BMW X3 from the position. And well, headroom, hardly comparable here because this one is not equipped with panoramic roof and then we have a lot more space, but you can also get one for that. Interior overview here with the X3, well, you feel it's not as sensual, not that modern, not like, oh, screaming out, wow, look at that, like in the Mercedes GLC. This one more drawn back, more conservative, nice brushed aluminum. Since the face dip, you also have a bigger screen here in 12.3 inch, but here different is with the GLC. We had this huge vertical one, here the more horizontal approach, so really large difference indeed. The question is what is better? What I do prefer in a way is to have a manual climate knob still with you know some haptic feedback and some interaction with the vehicle. As for the infotainment system here, the map is also somewhat responsive and this is the CarPlay integration also once again via touch or also control it from below. Car internal map then on the middle part in this OS7 generation not yet possible with, with CarPlay and Android Auto Maps. So you see here this is more simple and you don't have so many possibilities like with the Mercedes. Steering wheel buttons to me cooler here with the BMW because you can really press them there individual single buttons. And sound systems here the Harman Kardon in the BMW versus the GLC sound from Burmester. The thing is here the Harman Kardon to me little bit more low frequency bass intensive, also good in the surround sound and the Burmester maybe has a little bit more clearness. So hard to say which one is better. The thing is really more what you prefer. Lower part right here. Ah, this, you know, this can get stuck here at the beginning a little bit, so don't like it that much. But the cup holes are actually better with BMW. They hold bottles a little bit tighter. Inductive charging pad, you'll need this. Um, you can also connect via cable, but here. But the thing is that the CarPlay or Android Auto connection is always wireless. And with the BMW, you still get a real shifting lever in the lower area. Some do definitely prefer that. And here, this is then this control knob there. Another possibility for the infotainment system, I think it's good to have it, especially while driving. And then we have this armrest here, also very well built, with more space underneath. Also nice build quality here in the rear with soft touch materials, this leather red covering, sensor tech covering for the rear, rear seat doors, and here with this brushed aluminum look. Wow, pretty cool actually. And then also the seat bench with the perforated center tech. So yeah, looks like a build, good build quality, a little bit more conservative in the styling. It's also the comparable older vehicle. As for the leg room, when I'm driving, you see also not too much space. The recess also works. So yeah, both don't have too much leg room here. I have to say um, here it would also be, I compared the GLC with the internal brother GLB, which had more space on the interior, although it's same size. The X1 is smaller than this one here, but has basically the same or maybe even a little bit more leg room. It always has to do with the packaging and these bigger vehicles, they usually have longer hood and so on. Headroom, no problem at all, but this one again also without the panoramic roof. I can't say that any of these here has a big advantage in the rear. Middle seating, um, yeah, it's also a little bit cramped as for the legs, but then it's a little bit softer here. So both work for four tall adults, five just on short tracks, but no clear winner as for the rear. Now the trunk comparison, both used to be at 550 liters in capacity. The GLC now topped up 50 liters. It's now a little bit larger, so 600 liters. And what about the concise thing? So here we have the slider rails on the side. The width here is actually a little bit more than a meter of 40 inches. That's well done. And the length is yeah, also approximately a meter or 40 inches, maybe a little bit shorter. And the height is also very interesting. This is the highest point here at 73 centimeters or 29 inches. The folding mechanism here, at least when you have this one, this possibility, this is awesome, the most awesome. Look at that, I mean, wow. Immediate folding and super clean and flat. And the total length is about, yeah, about 180 or 71 inches. Below here, by the way, a lot of space still. Look at that. Then when we switch it over to the X3, you maybe remember the height with the DLC. Let's compare it here. What do we score? This is higher at like 
78 centimeters or 30 inches so the GLC was ending here so you have you know like more height here that's very usable then below also some more space then about the total length because we can also fold the seats um, here in the deck three of course but we have to reach over but then it's actually also fairly easy to do that a little bit less comfortable total length here yeah i mean here it's like also 180 or 71 inches it depends also where it's closing usually it's more like here so yeah more or less the same and then here the normal length of the trunk is yeah a little bit shorter here as well a little bit less than a meter 40 inches the width here is comparable indeed a little bit more than a meter or 40 inches so a um, little bit more height for the X3, but a little bit more length for the GLC. Overall, both are very, very well usable. This seems to be here more, you know, a little bit more square, especially the opening. As for the engines, main difference is that for the X3, you can get six cylinder petrol and diesel engines. However, this is the four cylinder engine, also a very big bestseller here, the 30i as rear drive or as X drive here with the all wheel drive, rear wheel bias. 245 horsepower at least in the EU spec, 258 horsepower for the 2 liter 4 cylinder in the GLC, GLC 300 also available as rear drive or all wheel drive and with the new generation of the GLC they set everything on 4 cylinders expecting a 6 cylinder diesel on the later stage so these are the main differences and the thing is that the excavation figure the GLC is a little bit quicker than the X3 here in this comparable engine spec and also the plug-in hybrids they have a lot more range here with this C-Class or GLC platform. Let's go. Oh, let's go. 